one of the broadest fundamental stupidities I deal with about magnetism is the notion that a magnet has two poles, you know, one side is a north pole, and this side is a... People think there's just magnetism, like, pouring out of one side. What's pouring? <laughs> I got these images, and you can check out the links below for these images. And this is actually measurable, not only with bismuth, but there's actually a lot of different things to measure this by. You get measurable with a Gauss meter. This is the center part of a magnet. We actually have centripetal convergence, and then we have intermediate zones, and true magnetism is along the outside edge. This would be looking at the top part of a cylinder magnet. It doesn't matter whether it's a cube magnet or a cylinder magnet. It's all the same. We actually have three zones here. Well, it depends on how you count it. We actually have point of centripetal convergence, a transference zone, and here we actually have the centrifugal, i.e. the true magnetism. Interesting thing about an old TV set. Let me show you these images in a second. Now, I actually used a camcorder to film these. One of them is just a cross, and the other one's a uh, counterclockwise spiral, and the other one's a clockwise spiral, just paper. I filmed it, and I fed it to an old TV set. And a TV set, uh, people think, well, it's a cathode ray tube. Um, shooting out, no, it's shooting out dielectric discharges to the phosphorus on the inside of the screen. So it's basically a, a dielectric... Uh, a uh, dielectric emitter that's hitting the screen, and you can influence those with magnetic and dielectric fields. I actually took the cross, so it's just a piece of paper, it's just a direct cross. One side of a magnet, then the other side of the magnet. Here you can see one pole, I'm holding the magnet up to the 27-inch uh, CRT display. Here we actually see a counterclockwise spiral, and you flip the magnet around, and we see a clockwise spiral. And uh, over here, if I actually use the inverse, you can actually see the inverse pattern. Right here, you can see how bright it is. Since the CRT tube is actually emitting uh, dielectric uh, discharges to the front of the TV uh, screen, which, of course, we have an electron gun. I'm not shooting electrons. We can say electron gun. It's just a dielectric discharge device. It's actually shooting these dielectric discharges to the phosphorus for the RGB to actually produce the image on the TV set. You can see how bright it is here, but that's actually at the dead center of this huge cylinder magnet, and you can see the little scintillating hair as it's actually rotating clockwise, but inverse to the centripetal point on the outside of the magnet, we are actually getting inverse. You can actually see how this is turned. Now, both of these are the same image, um, but one with a different pole. You see here that it's actually causing... The image that's actually being projected has not been changed. It is a clockwise uh, spiral projected on the CRT display, and you can see that it has broadened it all it has done is open that up, but you can see the centrifugal, i.e. the true magnetism, is uh, going clockwise, but the centripetal point is going counterclockwise. But the exact same image with the flip side is inverse, so instead of, you see the difference between this and uh, the, the other image? This is actually in concordance with the centrifugal polarity and the, so far as its movement. The movement on the centrifugal polarity that's being held up to the CRT display is clockwise. But when I flip it around, it is counterclockwise, and it causes the spiral projection to loop in on itself. But both of these are exactly the same. But here you can see, since it's going uh, counterclockwise on the centrifugal, i.e. true magnetism, it's going, centri uh, it's going clockwise on the center part. So clockwise on the centripetal point, but counterclockwise on the centrifugal. Uh, excuse me, on the uh, centripetal uh, convergent dielectric and centrifugal uh, counterclockwise on the centrifugal divergent, i.e. the true magnetism. Over here we have the complete inverse. We have at the point of centripetal dielectric convergence, we have a counterclockwise spiral at the center here, but... Um, yeah, counterclockwise spiral, but a clockwise spiral on... Eh, there's a lot of uh, clockwises to remember there. A clockwise spiral in concordance with the actual diagram or the actual spiral printed that's being fed from the camcorder to the front of the TV set. Uh, that's actually an image I took the other day. It's a uh, first flash photography of, uh, of a magnetic field. But uh, every pole has uh, two completely different pressure zones on it. Uh, and, of course, they're all both going the same direction, but with respect to each other, they're going differently. If you actually take your hands and go like this, it's like, well, if you look this way, this one's going counterclockwise, and the hand underneath is going clockwise. But they're both moving in the exact same direction, but just res with respect to each other, they are going inversely, but they are both going the same. Because if you go like this, you can see this hand is going uh, clockwise. But if I actually flip it around and keep the... Uh, 
the motion the same. They're both going the exact same direction. Actually, she's going to be going this way. This one's going clockwise, and if I flip it around, this one's also going clockwise. There we go. Uh, spatial variance. Uh, uh, um, there's actually a name for that where you actually get the disorientation, spatial disorientation. But, uh, each and every side of a magnet has two inverse uh, vortex uh, motions. One is centrifugal divergence, i.e. true magnetism along the outside edge, and uh, centripetal convergence, moving inverse to that, and likewise inversely so on the other side. A magnet doesn't have poles, it just has the inverse of counter space, which is force in motion and centrifugal divergence. The way these pressure zones interplay between each other is 90 degrees conjugate. It's a conjugate system the magnetodielectric system that actually makes up the magnet. Here you can see the counterclockwise uh, motion applied to the grid, and I just flipped the magnet around, and now it's going clockwise. Actually, old tube TV sets, uh, cathode ray sets, are actually really, really good magnetic viewing devices. You can actually see the vortex. You can use, also use old uh, tube displays from uh, computers. I mean, the old computer uh, CRT tube displays, those are actually also really good. All I have to do is just throw up a grid or throw up a spiral. Actually, I didn't need this other spiral. I don't know why I printed it out. I only used one spiral to make the proof. Anyway, I hope you liked that video. Something as very simple as an old TV set is actually a really good uh, magnetic demo. No one would have done this back in the day because it's, it, there's a high probability of permanently damaging your TV. <laughs> but nobody cares about those old type of TVs anymore, so it's no big deal. Thank you so much for watching. There's another way of viewing the uh, clockwise and counterclockwise spiral and conjugate vortex on either quote-unquote pole of a magnet. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.